Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. Today we're gonna to take a look at a new firmware for the X6200 radio from Zygu. I highly recommend that if you're gonna get this radio, you get it from Radioddity because they have fantastic customer support and you're probably gonna need it with a Zygu radio. Let's get over to Radioddity's website and take a look at this firmware update. So once you get to Radioddity's website, you wanna take a look at this support link up here in the corner and you wanna pick Zygu. And then if you scroll down, you'll see this X6200 and you'll see there was a new firmware released on October 14th, 2024. It is version 1.03. We're going to play with it today. So after you get the file downloaded and you remembered where it was, you got to get the file extracted because it is a zip file. On Mac OS, this is fairly easy. You just double click on the file and it starts extracting itself into a folder named after the zip file. On Windows, if you double click on the file, it goes inside of the zip file and just shows you the contents as if it was a regular folder, which has its niceties, but it really trips you up sometimes because you just think you're in a regular folder and you want to execute stuff and, and you can't because it's inside of a compressed folder. So in Windows, you want to right click on the zip file and then there is a extract all or something like that. And then it will ask you what folder to put it in. Once you're in there, there is a PDF file, a readme.first file, the SD card image is actually the image of the firmware. I've got a video on how to do the firmware. I'll link that at the top for you. And then the release notes. Let's see what's inside this PDF. So it looks like the PDF is a nice cleaned up version that Radioddity provides for you that tells you all of the stuff. So what do we got? Like how it says, as of September 24th, but they didn't release it until the 14th. Okay. Don't fix it if it's not broken. They're telling you not to install the firmware unless you actually have some problem that you think the firmware is going to fix. So that's why we read the release notes. Adjusted the built-in charger algorithm and fixed the problem that the green light still flashes on some machines after the battery already is fully charged. Fixed a bug that the compression switch is inverted. That's probably not what it means. Adjusted the ALC control algorithm, something you're not going to notice unless you have an amplifier that you're connected to or you're doing a lot of digital modes. Optimize the noise reduction algorithm and improve the noise reduction performance. Optimize the AGC algorithm and improve the signal to noise ratio. That's what you hear. ALC is what you send. AGC is what you hear. Uh, fix the timing bug of the automatic CW key. Updated the DFL filter for settings for CW. Fix the bug that there is no sound when the CW side tone volume is adjusted above 63. Fix various bugs of the, of the CI5 implementation. So that's your cat control. Adjusted the interaction logic of the WLAN submenu for easier use. That was a little confusing, so we'll have to take a look at that. Added a mem to VFO soft key, added initial functionality for planned Bluetooth support of mobile phone app FT8CN. Nice. I did a video on FT8CN a long time ago. It is a really, really cool application. So be sure and check that one out up there as well. Oh, the improvements have not been mentioned in the original Zygu release notes. So that's kind of another problem that I have noticed over my many years of experience in working with firmware updates. A lot of times there's a firmware update that will fix something that they won't tell you it fixed, maybe because they're embarrassed, I don't know, but there's a couple of them. So the DFL, the filter settings for CW was one of them. The compression switch being inverted was another one. So those are two things where they made a fix and didn't tell you what it was. And then this is previous versions of the firmware. I play around with SD cards a lot. And so I have one of these SD card holders and those little, those little tiny things, they are just so ridiculously tiny and so easy to lose. And this is about the size of a credit card and it holds uh, 10 SD cards and an SD card adapter. And so that's what I'm gonna use in order to get this done. There'll be a link for that in the description down below, as well as a link to Radioddity's website where you can get a $15 off discount on any purchase over $60. And whenever you are messing with firmware, I recommend that you are on some type of external power you don't want to lose power in the middle of a firmware update. So we are plugged in and we got the blinky blinky lights. So it did some stuff behind the scenes after it finished doing the upgrade and made a whole bunch of clicking noises and it didn't come back to this screen. So I'm going to go ahead and just reboot it and it powered back up just fine. So we're going to keep on keeping on. So this was something I was alerted to look out for. We're at eight watts now. I'm gonna turn this all the way down to nothing, half a watt. And I've got it on a power meter and into a dummy load. And I've got it on wide FM mode, as you can see there. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to let you guys take a look at that power meter and we're gonna key up and I'm gonna turn the power up. So we're at half a watt testing into a dummy load and it puts out almost one watt. And then I'm gonna start turning the power up. We're at five watts now. 
5 watts and we're putting out, um, still keyed down, we're putting out 1.75. We're going to go up to 8 watts all the way up. That's 8 watts output, 3 watts out on the meter. That's not very good. So check your power before and after and be prepared. So now I'm going to downgrade the firmware to the previous version because 3 watts out is not what I paid for. And we're going to check that out again. And just so nobody complains, I've got it in CW mode and I have a paddle here and it's set to straight key mode. Let's take a look at the power meter. Key down. And we are set for 8 watts of output power and we're not getting 8 watts of output power. We're getting almost four. I'd say mystery solved, but it's still a mystery. We got the problem fixed, but I don't know what actually was the problem or what we actually did to fix it. Let's go take a look. I go into system and I choose factory reset. Do factory reset, your data will lost. Sure will. Do factory reset, your data will lost. Press OK button again. So I do that and it reboots. All right, so now we want to go in and we want to change the mode over to CW again. I've got my CW key and I've got my power meter. So let's key down CW. And I am set at five watts and we're getting 4.7, 4.8 and climbing. And the climbing thing is something that this radio does. Let's go up to eight watts. And 7.7 .7 and climbing, 7.8, 7.9, eight watts, ta-da! And we're still climbing. So the moral of the story here is if you ever have any problems with this radio, do a factory reset. I did the factory reset, I checked the power out, we're getting full power out now. So that's a good thing. And then the next thing I wanna check is the Wi-Fi setting. System WLAN, and it says we are connected. I am at the Boot Hill RV Resort today, so we're gonna try and connect to their Wi-Fi and see how difficult it is. Its signal strength is one bar, and it's reported in there twice. I guess one of those is 2.4 and one of those is five. It would be nice to know which one was which. So now this one here has two bars. We'll take the two bar one, and we'll do config on that. And how do I get over to type in the password? Config doesn't do it. Wi-Fi switch turns Wi-Fi off and on. That's not going to help. Config. Yeah, it's not a touch screen, so I can't, I can't touch that on the screen. Connect. It's not going to connect without a password. It's going to try and connect without a password, but it's not going to connect without a password. So when they say they improved it, I guess they made it more difficult to use, more difficult to understand, because right now it's trying to connect and I have no indication that it's trying to connect. It's still going a little crazy thinking it's doing something, but I don't know what it's doing. Let's go back in to turn on the Wi-Fi switch. That doesn't look very hidden to me. Toggles toggling the auto connect on and off. Config, turn off the auto connect. I still can't move around over there. So they made it much better by making it much worse. I have no way of entering the password in order to connect to my network, unless I plugged in a keyboard and mouse. And why would you want to do that when you should be able to do it right from the front panel? Okay, so I have a Logitech keyboard, which if something doesn't work with a Logitech keyboard, it's probably not going to work at all. And I have a a JX Mox USB-A to USB-C adapter to be able to plug it into the side of the radio. I'm going to plug it into the host port and then there is my Logitech keyboard. And now we have a mouse pointer on the screen. So let's see if I can do it with the mouse and keyboard only. So there's system, there's WLAN, wait for my network to show up. Okay, the scroll bar is indicating that it's at the bottom of the list already, but we know there's more on the list. Haven't yet found my network. Oh, the white part is the empty part of the scroll bar and the dark gray part is the bar itself that you're scrolling? Yeah, okay, wow. All right, so there's the guest network. Let's hit config. Okay, so now it's popped over here on this side and you can turn on auto connect or not. That should be to connect on boot, which would make it take a little bit longer to boot up. We'll just leave it on for now. And the password is very secure, boot hill. And that should be stars, but it's not. So now I have my Wi-Fi ID and it's set for DHCP and I have my password. I'm gonna hit connect. And it appears to have frozen up. Maybe it's trying to connect. Ah, there it goes. Well, that seems... <laughs> it's done, but it doesn't seem like it's actually done. Exit, exit, and it's not. So there's no, there's no Wi-Fi indicator up here in the corner. So we go back into system, WLAN, guest, 
config, password, boot hill, connect. Again, less than, less than exciting results. And now I have connected back to my own personal Wi-Fi, which is closer. It's actually in the same physical room that I'm in right now. And I have a connection. So I'm gonna blame that on the Boot Hill RV Park connection, but I should not need a keyboard and a mouse in order to make this connection work. There will be links in the description down below where you can get this radio with a $15 off discount. It's a fun radio if you like to have fun with radios. If you like to make contacts on radios, there's gonna be some frustration involved, but I still think it's a good value for a QRP rig that has all of these features. And then if you're looking for a 100 watt rig, there are 100 watt rigs in the same price, but that's the way that, uh, that's the way the QRP cookie crumbles. There's a video right over here I think you might enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.